as someone who was there from the beginning, like <laughs> the amount of pseudoscience that was flying around and like, you know, people who were saying they were like, you know, scientists and telling us one thing and telling us another. And we're all trying to like create hair that doesn't come out of our scalp. It has really impacted. Yep. Okay. The positive of it is that I think a lot of us have, we are probably the, the last generation, um, if not before us, to not touch our children's hair with some type of like chemical product. And, and like we're, yeah. we've really stepped into giving our children the opportunity to decide what to do with their hair. I think that's one of the biggest parts, yes. the biggest positives. But the impact on us as adults, I think, is really what I, I lament over because like if all of that information was a little more realistic, I can only imagine like how natural hair would have impacted conversations like colorism or like futurism or like yeah. even in general, like other mm -hmm. facets of white supremacy if it was done in a way that was honest to black women. I used to think that because the natural hair movement was aesthetic, I thought that maybe it would be effective because it wasn't attached to a politic as it was formerly. But obviously, you know, no, that's not the case. It, I do agree with you when you said earlier the aesthetic is what kind of like messed it up because one hair type was chosen as the archetype of what all of our hair was supposed to look like. So now that we've, we've realized that we've removed it from a politic, we've removed it from an aesthetic, it's going to move mm -hmm. to something else. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm like curious to see like what is, what is next?